The Earth is like an onion. It also consists of many layers. These layers can be divided among three main levels, the core, the mantle, and the crust. These layers differ in thickness. The crust is very thin, generally around 20 miles thick. The mantle and core, in contrast, are both hundreds of miles thick. These levels differ in their chemical composition and physical or mechanical properties. The layers can be further subdivided. For example, the core, which is about 1800 miles below the surface of the earth, consists of an inner solid core and an outer fluid core, both probably consisting of iron and nickel. The mantle can also be subdivided into inner and outer levels. Now, consider this. The deepest mine in the world is the Mapangan gold mine located southwest of Johannesburg in South Africa. It is the deepest place in the planet that humans have ever physically gone. The mine is located under two and a half miles of rock. Under the weight of all that rock, which creates pressure and heat, the mine gets as hot as 140 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to make it bearable for miners, the company pumps in an ice slurry from the surface which they use to cool the air and then circulate it like an air conditioning system. Oxygen is also a problem. After all, there is no fresh air that deep. The mine is separated from the atmosphere by two and a half miles of rock. Yet, the mine reaches no more than one tenth of the way through the crust the mantle is still a long way off. Now, let's take humans out of the equation and just think about holes. The deepest hole ever drilled into the earth is the Kola Super Deep Borehole, a nine inch tube that was drilled by the Soviet Union downward about 40,000 feet or about seven and a half miles. It's an astoundingly deep borehole, yet it made it only half the distance to the mantle. For now, geologists are left to theorize about the rocks and minerals that exist down in the mantle and core. The crust, however, is an entirely different story. In sedimentary geology, we focus on the outermost layers of onion earth. On average, the crust is about 20 miles or 30 kilometers thick, but there is tremendous variability. In the tallest mountain chain in the world, the Himalayan mountains, you find the thickest crust. Here, the crust is over 50 miles or 90 kilometers thick. Not surprisingly, you can find the thinnest crust in the deep ocean. Here, new crust is created by a geologic process related to the theory of plate tectonics. This process is called seafloor spreading. Magma from deep in the earth rises to the sea floor where it cools and becomes igneous rock. In this process, new rock displaces old rock, causing the crust to actually move. Indeed, it is this sea floor spreading that drives the movement of continents over time. In any case, 
new crust created by seafloor spreading is on average about three miles or six kilometers thick. However you slice it, the crust is just a thin layer on the outside of the onion. That said, the crust is our one and only focus in sedimentary geology, as it is the only level where you find sediment, sedimentary rock, and strata, which we study in sedimentology and stratigraphy. Let's look more closely at the amount of sediment and various types of rock in the crust. There are two ways to think about it. We can think about the crust as a simple, thin layer covering the planet. Ignore the fact that it is generally 20 miles thick and focus on the surface area of various types of sediment and rocks. Alternatively, recognizing that the crust does have thickness, we can consider the volume of sediment and rock in it. Surface area and volume both have a lot to tell us about the crust and its nature. In terms of volume, the crust mainly consists of igneous and metamorphic rocks, not sedimentary rocks. Only 5 to 10% of the crust is sedimentary rock. The bulk of the volume of the crust consists of igneous rock. Although sedimentary rock is a minor component of the crust in terms of volume, it accounts for the majority of its surface area. If we ignore soil, most of the surface exposed on our world is covered by sediment and sedimentary rock. Roughly three quarters of the surface area of the exposed land masses on our planet is covered by sediment and sedimentary rock. Of course, that only accounts for 30% of the total surface area of our planet. Most of Earth's surface area is located beneath the ocean. And not surprisingly, virtually all of the surface area beneath the world ocean is covered by sediment like sand, silt, and mud. So big picture, why does this matter? Generally speaking, the sediment and sedimentary rocks of our planet are just the skin of the onion. Sediment and sedimentary rocks extend on average no more than a mile or so beneath your feet. Below that, it's just igneous or in some places metamorphic rock. But the world you know resides on sediment and sedimentary rock. They are part of an area known as the critical zone. The critical zone is the near surface environment on Earth that extends from the tops of the tallest trees all the way down through the soil into the subsurface where groundwater circulates. It is the zone where rock, soil, water, air, and living organisms all interact with each other, create environmental conditions, and sustain life on our world. The critical zone is critical because it is the environment of life. It is perhaps the only zone on our world with life-sustaining properties. In any case, sediment and sedimentary rocks are key components to the critical zone. And regardless of what lies below, they disproportionately affect you and all other life forms that exist on our planet. Too bad that onion peels aren't nearly as useful. <laughs>